Good morning and welcome to St Mary's Claverton for our live streamed service. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you're well. Do text greetings to the rest of the church family uh, later on toward, at the end of the service. I'll um, be pleased to read out some greetings to one another and an encouragement at the moment to uh, text in something that you're thankful for. We did that last week and uh, we'll do that for a second week and then perhaps change to a, a different specific thing to text in um, next week. So if you can think of something you're thankful for, let the rest of us know and we can give thanks with you. Do, uh, as always we've been saying, take a selfie or, or send in some kind of photo of yourself. It's nice to see photos of different members of the church family. At the start, if you arrive a few minutes early, there's a slideshow rolling through and uh, we're reminded of one another and might perhaps be praying for one another. So do send in your photo. A new thing as of last week is dial a service. This number, which is a bath number, 697200, is one that uh, anybody can phone in from a normal phone, whether it's a, a home phone or a mobile, and we'll be able to listen to a recording of the service. So for those who are not able to get on the internet and watch with um, YouTube, as you're evidently doing, uh, then uh, this may be useful. I say you're evidently watching. Of course, the people who are listening on the recording will be hearing me say that as well. So do spread the word uh, if you think of anyone who might find that helpful. You may have heard news that the government has announced that as from tomorrow, it will no longer be illegal for churches to allow people in for private prayer, not tourism. Of course, this doesn't mean that many churches must or will necessarily open soon. There are serious questions of public liability and risk assessments of the need for daily deep cleaning and supervision to ensure social distancing, together with the protection of volunteers, which all mean that for some time into, into the future, we won't be able to open St Mary's. We do of course want to help and encourage those who are looking for a place to pray and feel the impulse to come into the church. We need to try and provide help to everyone to pray at home or outside on a walk or perhaps particularly in the churchyard and to spread the reassurance and understanding that God hears our prayer wherever we are, whether we're in a special church building or not. I expect that before long it will become legal again for churches to allow some kind of corporate worship to happen in the building as well, but it would be very restricted. Many people, especially those over the age of 70 or vulnerable for other reasons, will need to stay away. Social distancing will have to be observed. Numbers in church will be seriously restricted. Nobody will touch a bible or touch a hymn book or a notice sheet and perhaps one of the most serious restrictions is that singing together will be forbidden for a long time to come so again we won't jump to do as much as is allowed as soon as is allowed live streaming in the kind of way that we've been doing here since march will need to continue and uh, if you're eager for us to open the church building, um, you might like to volunteer some help with cleaning and with organising the cleaning and preparing the church building for opening. Let me know if uh, you're, uh, I've already had one or two offers of help with that. Um, and perhaps when there is enough help um, organised and it seems feasible to open the church building, uh, we'll look towards that in, in due course. We're missing singing, but we're going to have the opportunity to singing together, but uh, have the opportunity to sing in a sense together because all at the same time in our different places and sing along with um, the music that we're about to hear. Psalm 92 says it's good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning 
and your faithfulness at night. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, as it were, to render thanks for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present 
to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that th those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Now uh, I'll read Psalm 47, a psalm for the director of music of the Sons of Korah, a psalm. Clap your hands, all ye nations, shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amidst shouts of joy, the Lord amidst the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of the earth, of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations, God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of God of the God of Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We say together, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. 
when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long I was grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we have our Old Testament reading brought to us by Hugh. The Old Testament reading is in two parts. Firstly, Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 9, and then chapter 26, verses 1 to 13. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin the foreigner's stronghold, a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore strong peoples will honour you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners. As heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is stilled. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death for ever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. And chapter 26. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down. The feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level. You, the upright one, make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, Walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. But when grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Even in a land of uprightness, they go on doing evil and do not regard the majesty of the Lord. Lord, your hand is lifted high, but they do not see it. Let them see your zeal for your people and be put to shame. Let the fire reserved for your enemies consume them. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Lord our God, other lords beside you have ruled over us, but your name alone do we honour. Together, we praise we thee, thee, O God. God. We, we acknowledge thee to, to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. 
to thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee, the noble army of martyrs praise thee, the Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. The New Testament reading is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 10. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, next is the creed uh, for us to join in now. And there are a few faces up on the screen. It'd be lovely to have more faces from St Mary's uh, and voices together in this recording. I think there's going to be one more um, edition produced with extra recordings added. So do send yours in to Hugh. Let him know if you're um, planning to do it and haven't yet managed to. Thank you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion, communion of saints, the, saints, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, the, the resurrection of the body, 
and, and the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. So good morning, Harry Musselwhite. Very good to see your face this morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. And Harry, you're, um, we're very grateful for how you've been contributing with recording readings and prayers in the last few weeks, and uh, you're well known in St. Mary's. Tell us how you, how you first got involved in St. Mary's. Well, um, we, we came here in 2004, and it was because Bridget was offered um, a job. She was invited to join the RUH, their, their management team, and and became deputy chief executive after a, after a bit. Um, and at the time, Thomas Shepard was um, a trustee, a member of the board. And um, I don't know, they were chatting. And I, I guess he must have mentioned St. Mary's. And Bridget said, oh, she said, um, you don't need an organist, do you? Um, because Harry's come from Greater London and, uh, you know, was missing it. And he said, well, in fact, we might. And before, uh, well, only a few days elapsed and I was at St. Mary's and, and I was having an audition. And, the, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the audition with Paul Burden. And the audition was to play a hymn of my choice. So it wasn't too challenging. Um, Can you remember what you chose? No, I can't actually. Right. Um, I, I imagine I was sensible and chose something really simple. <laughs> <laughs> so right. like, you know, son of my soul, or something like that. Um, um, but anyway, don't I said, grow on well, trees. So uh, <laughs> it sounds as though we we were being quite choosy, though, keeping well, high standards. I, I, think, I think quite right. A proper process. So I um, I did say afterwards. Um, well, have I got the job or not? And um, there seemed to be a, a view that probably I had. But there were another uh, two organists. At the, at the time, um, so it, it wasn't just 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 me, because um, uh, Rosemary um, Wells's husband, Tony, played. Yes. Uh, and there was another man um, that I never met. Really? <laughs> who played, and he soon dropped away. I think he was quite elderly. I, d I don't know, I don't know anybody, but anyway. And then, so, and then Andrew came into it as well. Um, so at one time, you know, you had to fight to get your Sunday ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the organ, the wonderful uh, feature of St Mary's um, to have that historic instrument in the in the historic building. It's a and lovely. So uh, yeah, the much loved part of our regular worship when we're there. And one of the things we're missing when we're not able to be in church at the moment. Um, how's the lockdown going for you and your your family well, well i mean we're we're very lucky you know we've got a house we've got a garden and we can take the dog out i've always been able to do that uh, throughout throughout the period although i am being given my how ancient i am i have been pretty careful and the family have been wonderful in making sure i haven't taken any risks at all but so you know from far as my i'm concerned compared with how difficult it must be for some it's it's been a breeze um and um you know what what's been lovely is to have the, the family um with us because both alex and charlie have been here charlie's just gone back to cambridge this week um, right to try and get a month at least you know to say goodbye because it's he's finishing right so i mean that that's been very very good um yeah Mm. And you've got so very I good. Can't complain. It's been very positive, and of course, the, the diocese and the cathedral uh, have needed the same number of meetings. In fact, they've needed many more. Um, and I found it very much easier going to the meetings because uh, you don't rather have to than drive all the way to Wells. Sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. All I have to do is try and make the, make sure that uh, the internet connection is working, and that Alex is not using all the bandwidth. Other than that. <laughs> So you've got very good at very good at Zoom, and uh, I don't know very good, but I can certainly use it. Yes, um, I find it very very handy, actually. Yeah, mm. good. And um, and anything that you've been finding difficult, challenging? Well, it's friends and family, isn't it? I mean, Zoom is is not not the same. 
Um, and uh, I mean, we were to go away for a day, so we, we've lost that. We were going to go with friends. Um, and uh, so, so we haven't been able to do that. Um, I do miss St. Mary's and the folk there, and I miss playing the organ. I think I'm sure it's still there and it'll be fine when it started up again. But yeah, th th those are the things you miss, it's people. Um, uh, and Ray came uh, to see me the other evening. It was wonderful to be able to sit in the garden and talk to him. It was lovely. Right, oh, uh, good. And he wanted so, a check to find, I think that's what it was. Um, yes. It was lovely to see him. <laughs> and so, any, any prayer requests? How, how can we pray for you? Well, I mean, there isn't any doubt that as well as parishes, which are suffering really, really from financial difficulty, financial challenges, uh, the diocese and the cathedral are as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm locked into um, very lengthy, detailed and challenging discussions about, well, not so much this year, but how we, how we manage in 2021. Um, and, you know, we're having to make decisions. I'm sure some of them will be, won't go down terribly well, because when you cut back, they never do, do they? So I think um, uh, to be prayed for, for wisdom and discernment in doing that, trying to get it right, and I'm not the only one, obviously, I mean, there are a lot of us, but you know, we're all in the same boat, trying to feel our way, trying to predict what's going to happen uh, financially, trying to make sure that the various scenarios we choose are realistic and that we can cope. So that, that's my biggest challenge at the moment in terms of, of where divine help would be enormously appreciated, yes. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And um, it's a good reminder to bring those needs to the Lord. Thank you, Harry. Um, and so uh, thank you for doing this interview. I'm sure everyone will be pleased to, to see you and come into your home where it looks as though there might be some redecorating planned. Oh, I think uh, yeah, I wouldn't hold you servant above your left shoulder. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> the tidying is yeah in day one or two, you know, with months to go. <laughs> yes. Very good. Oh, no, it's been great fun. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And let's pray now. Father God, we thank you for the blessings that many of us are experiencing, that Harry mentioned gratitude for house and garden and family. And we thank you for all these mercies and signs of your goodness, recognising that not everyone has um, these things that make life easier for many of us. We pray for your blessing on Harry and Bridget and, Char and uh, Charlie and Alex and we pray for parishes throughout this diocese facing financial challenges as a result of the pandemic and the lockdown for our own parish finances. We ask that you would provide what is needed for St Mary's and for the future long-term mission in Claverton. We remember as well the needs of the diocese and cathedral and the administration of this whole collection of parishes. Uh, we ask for wisdom for Harry and others making decisions about the future allocation of resources, cuts that may need to be made, help them to be clear on priorities and help them to be realistic as they think about different scenarios of how things might happen and give them faith in all that and trust and confidence in your goodness and your provision. We pray that the churches might cope, recognising that we can't cope without your help 
and so we cry out to you to provide what is needed in Jesus name Amen the Lord be with you and with thy spirit let's continue praying Lord have mercy upon us Christ have mercy upon us Lord have mercy upon us O Lord show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation O Lord save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful O Lord save thy people and bless thine inheritance give peace in our time O Lord because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou O God O God make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us Almighty God who out of O God the strength of all them that put their trust in thee mercifully accept our prayers and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee grant us the help of thy grace that in keeping of thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Lord, Almighty, Heavenly Father Almighty, Almighty and Everlasting, everlasting God, God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts grant her in health and wealth long to live strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies and finally after this life she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through jesus christ our lord amen O almighty god who in thy wrath did send a plague upon thine own people in the wilderness for their obstinate rebellion against Moses and Aaron, and also in the time of King David did slay with the plague of pestilence three score and ten thousand, and yet remembering thy mercy didst save the rest. Have pity upon us miserable sinners, who now are visited with great sickness and mortality, that like as thou didst then accept of an atonement, and didst command the destroying angel to cease from punishing, so it may now please thee to withdraw from us this plague and grievous sickness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, on this uh, time of the third anniversary of the Grenfell disaster, we remember those who died tragically in that fire and we pray for your blessing and help and strength and peace for those who are still suffering the effects, those who are bereaved, those whose home situations are unsatisfactory and difficult, those who are longing for justice. And we pray for those who are working to make decisions to put things right in other buildings where there are still buildings with the wrong kind of cladding we ask that action might be taken quickly and that 
those that good might come out of those terrible deaths and that tragedy we pray for your blessing on the community of that part of London and may your love become more widely known Amen we pray Heavenly Father for uh, those of different racial backgrounds and those who experience racial prejudice and discrimination we ask for your forgiveness where we have been wittingly or unwittingly prejudiced we remember George Floyd Breonna Taylor Ahmaud Arbery and so many others we pray for justice for them for their families for peace from you, for families to know Jesus if they don't yet know him. Give in your grace the ability to forgive and to be able to keep living. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our oh, Father, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The Lord is our rock, our refuge, our safe place. Rock of ages, cleft for me.
Why is singing such an important part of our getting together as church? Some of us sing aloud with the hymns in the live stream services, some in household groups and some alone and some watch and sing in our hearts but aren't singing out loud as we might have enjoyed in the past in church and look forward one day to doing again. Even so, I think our services would lose a lot if we didn't include songs of praise. And that's why it would be a difficult balance when we get the opportunity to start meeting in church without singing. Uh, we're, there's as much, there's something to lose in that as well as the gain from a physical meeting of a few. Christians have always sung whenever they get together, right from New Testament times when the Lord Jesus followed the Old Testament Jewish practice of singing hymns with his disciples. Why? In the last few weeks of looking at Isaiah's prophecies, we've seen some tough messages of judgment for those who set themselves against the Lord. We're completing now this focus on the second section of Isaiah from chapters 13 through to 27. We haven't read every verse in that section, but we've tried to get a flavour of all of it and read most of it. The most chilling chapter is probably the one we've just skipped over, chapter 24, where Isaiah looks beyond the judgment on the nations around him in the coming years to the final judgment on the whole earth everything that makes human life sustainable and enjoyable is systematically destroyed. We may spot echoes in the environmental destruction going on now, but the picture in Isaiah 24 is more devastated than Greta Thunberg's worst nightmares. And yet, even as Isaiah foresees this big judgment with his long-range eschatological goggles on, can you guess what he hears? Look at chapter 24, verse 16. From the ends of the earth, we hear singing. Glory to the righteous one. This singing comes from a faithful remnant when the rest of the world have rebelled against God and are judged. It's a major theme in the book of Isaiah as a whole that there is a remnant who in chapter 24 verse 13 are like the few grapes left still on the vine after the harvest. In verse 14 they raise their voices and shout for joy. What have they got to sing and shout about? In chapters 25 and 26 we hear more of the content of their songs and shouts of praise. Chapter 25 verses 1 to 9 Isaiah gives us some reasons to praise God. So I'm going to work through just those nine verses and give some pointers as we go to other parts of this section. Look at verse one. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things or marvellous things as my Bible says. I've got the old NIV. We praise God for what he has done. He is not just sitting up in his heaven in splendid isolation, leaving us to suffer down here. He is involved in human history. He cares and he has revealed what he's like by both speaking and acting. So God's people praise him. We praise him because he planned everything from long ago. Nothing takes God by surprise. He had it all planned. He's in control. He's not making it up as he goes along like our government is and we ourselves are. He has a proper plan and that plan, the New Testament tells us, has from eternity centred on his son, the Lord Jesus, whose death and resurrection were not a setback and then a dramatic plan B, but were all part of the plan to save all his people. We praise him because he humbles the proud. He made the fortified city a heap of rubble, showing how useless for people to trust in their own resources 
and defences. That's verse 2. Therefore, verse 3, strong peoples will honour you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. Just as every knee shall bow before the Lord Jesus and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in the end. The message of the cross of Jesus is described in 1 Corinthians 1 as a stumbling block to proud people. The cross of Jesus turns everything upside down and it's through that that God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Isaiah 25 verse 10 says God will bring down their pride despite the cleverness of their hands. God hates human pride. The mind boggles as to why any Christian would want to identify with a movement that calls itself pride. See the triumph of the humble over the proud in Isaiah 26 verse 5. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed. The footsteps of the poor. Do you find that image resonates with what we've been seeing in the news over the last week or so? Statues topple and are cast down into the dust or into Bristol Harbour. Or 17 years ago, do you remember the statue of Saddam pulled down by US Marines in Baghdad, stamped on by the shoes of the people he had oppressed? I feel I should say something about all this statue toppling today. I expect you might agree with me in wanting to say something on both sides or else you might want to discuss it afterwards. Certainly the Black Lives Matter demonstrations have a point. I'm sure there has been unacknowledged racial prejudice and discrimination throughout our society that we need to work to root out and repent of. All human beings are made in the image of God and are of equal value. The transatlantic slave trade was a horrendous evil and we should be grateful for Christians like Wilberforce and shine a light on the blind spot that allows someone like Edward Colston to be so honoured. Seeing pictures of that statue coming down felt like a wrong being righted and yet it was in the wrong way wasn't it? It should have happened sooner through due process. With my limited knowledge I'm of the opinion that the police were probably wise not to intervene once they found themselves in that situation which seems to me intervention would have turned heavy-handed and stoked up more violence but on the other hand, we need law and order to be maintained and protesters must not take the law into their own hands with all the other statues commemorating heroes whose flaws may or may not be serious enough to outweigh the good being celebrated. These things need to be discussed calmly and appropriate action taken legally to ensure that what we are celebrating and commemorating is the good that people have done and not the evil. And we need to take care not to airbrush these wrongs out of our history as we take care not to glory in them. God humbles the proud and praise him that he keeps the poor and needy safe. Verse 4, you've been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners. As heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is stilled. In our climate, we don't often experience the sun going in as such relief, but we know what he means. It's God himself who is 
the refuge. Not here the strong walled city of Jerusalem, even though Zion so often repent, represents God's protection. That's something worth remembering when we can't go into our lovely old stone church to pray. It's not those stones that hear our prayers, it's the omnipresent Lord. He's with you on, on your sofa there in your pyjamas. He can see you. He'll protect you if you turn to him. And praise God that he will provide a great feast for all peoples. When we were reading Matthew's Gospel in church last year, we looked back to this verse in Isaiah when we saw how Jesus feeding the 5,000 hinted at the fulfilment of this prophecy. On, the mountain of the, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. Maybe we see it in Jesus changing water into wine as well. But it's when he fed the 4,000 in a Gentile area that this is most relevant because it's for all peoples, not just the Jews, not just Israel. And it should go without saying, of course, not just white people. There's, this is, is strong impetus for us to oppose all racism. Here's a picture um, of the uh, black front coming a picture taken last weekend, end of last week, from Bath's own Black Lives Matter rally. There's a, a Christian in the foreground holding up a Bible because the message of the scriptures is of God's love for all peoples. Black lives matter to God. Our society's Christian roots demand that we value people from all ethnic backgrounds equally. The food isn't all that Isaiah is pointing forward to with his long range vision. Praise God that he will destroy death. Look at verse seven. And if you're feeling afraid of death, take this to heart. If you've lost a loved one, to that great enemy, death. Hear this promise from our promise-keeping God. If the, the tears keep coming and you've got problems in this life that don't look as though they're going to go away in this life, look at verse seven and verse eight. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers the nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. People sometimes observe quite rightly that in God's unfolding revelation of himself in all the scriptures, even though the Old Testament is consistent with the new, it's very different because it's focused on this world, whereas the New Testament has eternity and the age to come much more in focus. But there are various hints throughout the Old Testament that even though people's view is mainly limited to this life, Old Covenant believers had an idea that this was not all there is to life. And here in Isaiah is possibly the clearest refer reference to resurrection in the whole Old Testament. Here in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 19 but your dead will live, their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning, the earth will give birth to her dead. And we know how the fulfillment of that comes. Jesus pulled a few people back from the grave and he said to Lazarus' sister, I am the resurrection and the life. When Jesus died, 
Matthew tells us at that moment the earth shook, the rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. These people must have ended up back in their graves again afterwards, but not forever. Because Jesus rose on that Sunday never to die again, because those events 700 years after Isaiah and 2,000 years before us point us forward to the complete fulfilment of this prophecy when death is finally destroyed and the Lord ultimately wipes away every tear when you and I and countless others will join in the great song in that day with no fear of passing on any virus as we throw back our heads and sing at the top of our voices. Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Let's pray. Father God, you are our God. We are so uplifted when we we're so uplifted to have you as our God you do marvelous things and we're proud of you as our God we want to tell the world of the wonderful things you've done you have defeated death through the death of your son we want to sing about it to rejoice and be glad in your salvation we can't be proud of ourselves only of you because we didn't do anything to save ourselves. We just trusted you and you saved us. You delight to save those who trust you. So keep us in the faith, keep us trusting you. When we feel afraid and our faith wobbles, help us look to you and know that you're strong. You do marvelous things. Keep us relying on you and keep us looking beyond the struggles of this life looking forward to that great banquet with the best meat and the finest wine together with all your people from every race when we will be with you forever. Amen. We're going to sing our, our final hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. And during this, uh, you might like to think of it as the offertory hymn, there are the bank details for a, a bank transfer or standing order. And uh, here is the mobile number to text to if you'd like to give by text, um, one of those amounts, or using the word mission, you can give to the Bread of Life Society, which we've been hearing about in the last couple of weeks, uh, working amongst Syrian refugees and Lebanese churches. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
do text in uh, something you're thankful for or greetings to the rest of the church family um, before we finish. Uh, I've had a text from Joanie saying thankful for peace, health and a lovely environment and parents from South Africa listening again. Um, good to have you with us all the way from South Africa. Diane says greetings to everyone, don't worry Harry, the organ is still there as is everything else. Diane and Roger and Joanna. Uh, good morning everyone. Thanksgivings for the fantastic scenery surrounding us and lovely walking between the showers. And of course the rain a sign of God's blessing as well even though we might have mixed feelings about it. Thanks to all and missing Harry's organ playing. All best Joanna. And uh, I've had a card from Tiny who's very good at sending things through the post um, as he doesn't use email and uh, internet and things I hope but you might be listening Tiny on the on the recording on the phone I don't know how it's gone getting this far through the service but this um, card is of a wood engraving that Tiny's done of the Shetland bus um, which transported people and um, equipment supplies to Norway during the war. That's all the texts I've received to that point. So uh, let's finish there and see you next week. But also um, this Wednesday, we have the Claverton Virtual Coffee Morning, St Mary's Claverton Virtual Coffee Morning. Um, details on the website and in the um, in the email update for a Zoom link. Be lovely to see you and have have a brief chat at ten o'clock on Wednesday. Do contact me if you're struggling to get on or contact Hugh. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you for his service and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.